Morning and welcome to Joe News Prime live from our studio here in Koko Mlemle Accra. We're live on DSTV Channel 42 and Go TV Channel 125 and around the world on myjoyonline.com. Coming up on the matter of the nationwide internet disruption, minority MP blast National Communication Authority for its poor oversight of the communication sector. More as a sector minister says the NCA is in a race to secure policy approval to incense. Uh, um, uh, to set light pro providers to reduce the country's reliance on undersea internet cables. Station networks. One web has already been licensed. Starlink is in the process of being licensed. And other operators are being encouraged to land in Ghana. We must also invest in operationalizing RASCOM, the regional African satellite company. Now, pressure is mounting on the Ghana Shippers Authority to ensure waivers are issued on demurrage, rent, and storage of cargoes at the Tema port as the disruption in internet services bites hard on cargo clearance. Appealing to the Ghana Shippers Authority to really intervene, um, begin a conversation or begin a conversation with the shipping lines to at least um, waive off whatever demurrage and, of course, with the terminals or whatever rent or storage that work. Also, more empty plates emerge in various senior high schools as former chance president blames delays in release of funds and payment to suppliers for precarious acute food shortages plaguing the free SHS policy. This first was highly interesting. So, someone advised us that we can use in three. So yesterday, we put it outside. The boys put it outside and, they, and these were given to be fed to yes, the children. Yes. All right, so welcome uh, to this bulletin. To start off, now it's been five days since undersea internet cables were caught plunging the entire country into an internet blackout. Five days on, the country is still yet to fully recover. NDC MP for Ningo Pram Pram and Deputy Ranking Member on the Communications Committee, Samuel Nate George, says the difficulty currently being faced by the country is due to poor regulatory oversight by the National Communications Authority. Following the blackout, only AT was not affected because it had adequate redundancy, something MTN and Telecel do not have. More from some George Shorley, but Communications Minister Ursula Osuekufo says, uh, to forestall a future occurrence, the NCA is working to license satellite internet service providers to uh, reduce the country's reliance on undersea internet cables. The initial remote investigations, all affected cable providers have given them the approximate locations where the cables have been damaged. To commence the repairs, these cable providers need permits from the authorities in Cote d'Ivoire and or Senegal. Their vessels will then be assigned to retrieve the necessary spares required for the repair work before sailing to the fault location to conduct the physical repair work. The affected section of the submarine cable will have to be pulled up from the seabed onto the ship where the repair vessel, where it will be spliced by skilled technicians to complete the repair. It will then be tested for any defects and which will be fixed and then lowered back to the seabed. This process, I'm told, might take between one and two weeks for the repair, actual repairs, while it will take about two to three weeks of transit time for the vessel to pick up the spares and then travel from Europe to West Africa once the vessel is mobilized. And that is why the NCA indicated that it would take a minimum time of a period of about five weeks for full services to be restored. With regard to the use of satellites as an alternative, it is important to note that the bandwidth of a satellite backup for network operators cannot replace the capacity that has been lost due to the outage. Satellite backup for consumers is more feasible. However, the cost is relatively much higher than the terrestrial solutions. Immediate initiatives that need, the government will undertake is that we will license satellite gateway air stations 
landing rights, and satellite air station networks. OneWeb has already been licensed. Starlink is in the process of being licensed. And other operators are being encouraged to land in Ghana. We must also invest in operationalizing RASCOM, the regional African satellite company, instead of each company, each country going it. But according to some George, all other countries which face the challenge have all significantly recovered, except Ghana, because of what he describes as poor oversight by the NCA. Mr. Speaker, I hold the view that we are where we are simply because the regulator that works under the minister failed to do their job. The responsibility rests with the regulator. This is not about another country and force majeure. A regulator doing its job would have put in place the mechanisms and the redundancies that would have allowed us to be prepared for this instance. Mr. Speaker, the cut happened off the coast of Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire was the most impacted country on Thursday. As we speak today, Cote d'Ivoire's recovery is ahead of Ghana simply because their regulator had put in place the right mechanisms. The, in the case of AT, and if you ask what Cote d'Ivoire is doing, they're using MOVE, the MOVE operator cable. They've immediately allowed all the other operators to piggyback on MOVE. When you speak about the success of AT, AT is simply able to carry traffic because they have redundancy using the Nigerian link. But is that not supposed to be a prerequisite for all the other operators in the country? Who is supposed to monitor that? It is the regulator. So if the regulator has slept on his job, and today we are found in this position, and then we want to raise our hands up in the air and say, oh, other countries that were affected have recovered and are recovering faster than Ghana because their regulators are proactive. Our regulator today is competing with the Ghana Chamber of Telecom. The Ghana Chamber of Telecom serves the interest of the telecom companies and is their advocate. The, Ghana, the, the Ghanaian regulator is supposed to be the advocate for the rights. The NTA, the National Communications Authority, is supposed to be the advocate for the rights of Ghanaian citizens and customers. The four updates that have been put out by the NTA are simply mirroring the statements of the Chamber of Telecom. They don't tell us they don't tell us what remedial actions by way of regulatory policy are being put in place for the Ghanaian customer. They're only telling us what the problems are. That is the language of the regulator. He is going to tell you what the problems are. I am expecting the NCA to tell me what the solutions are, not what the problems are, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, <laughs> the minister must bear in mind, and the Honorable Harun Aydusu spoke about the fact that the telecoms industry is in its worst shape in our, in, our, in our history. It's true. Now, Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kweku Asante joins us with details. Kweku, this was such a big matter on the floor. A former communications minister in Haruna Idrisu is criticizing the government for poor investment in the sector, right? Well, Brace, according to Haruna Idrisu, if government had done significant investment in this sector, what would have happened is that there would have been enough redundancy and that what the government has done, or simply done, is to just offset the cost to private uh, investors in MTN, in Telesel, in Airtel Tigo. And that is why this problem is so compounded in the country. Listen. This I have done is to lay bare or naked the lack of redundancy in Ghana and the lack of internet capacity in Ghana and the lack of domestic internet capacity in Ghana and our continuous heavy reliance on external connectivity. That is what she's done. But Mr. Speaker, as a country, she needs every support. As I listened to her, she said we would. When you say we would, you and who? This is an industry largely led by the private sector. Even you, if you were to require money tomorrow to fix Ghana's internet capacity, will you find it from the government of Ghana and the Ministry of Finance? These are, the, these are the bare issues we should look at. This is an industry which is largely private sector driven. 
We need to create an enabling environment for them to expand access. But as government, you are commending META. How might the government of Ghana contribute to the META 45 kilometers? No, zero. You have no contribution. Again, a dependency. But Mr. Speaker, whilst looking at this matter, in the last few days, since Thursday, as she rightly pointed, 14th, Thursday, Mr. Speaker, this is a major wake-up call for Ghana. The banking sector could almost ground to a halt. Academic, internet, online, connectivity, ground to a halt. Electricity, ground to a halt. All of it attributable to an internet card of a submarine cable. I still recall uh, a sad trade for the phone. Glow main cable was launched at Kosui here. Main one was launched. We've had two more additions to it. But Mr. Speaker, I only agree with the recommendations that we must look within. But Mr. Speaker, again, Minister for Communication, your telecom landscape today is not as rosy as it was a decade ago. Mr. Speaker, Ghana's telecom sector is going through one of its worst moments in the country's history. Apart from MTN, the rest are all struggling to survive or struggling to die. Struggling to survive or struggling to die. You know that. Why will you get one of them walk away and say that government of Ghana should bring a one dollar and take it out? What was the value of it? So, Kweku, someone at Tachina was asking what it will take for government to fully invest in cables and internet services. Has he gotten any answers yet? Well, on the back of that concern from Harun Idriso, um, the Buakwa South MP is of concern that the government need to do something. So he's been asking how much exactly it will cost. Mm. He later got a response, not from the minister, but from St. George, that it will cost about 14 billion Ghana cities, $14 billion, I should actually say, and not and it's not some small amount of money that the government can afford as we speak now. But he is concerned that government must be doing some investment locally mm. to be able to win itself off such private interest. Mm. Uh, the minister posits that this is a force majeure, which in law means an unforeseeable circumstance that prevents someone from fulfilling their contract, something that is not anticipated. Good. Now, my, my concern is that, or if I understand um, um, what she said, that as of now, we are not, so far as our internet infrastructure is concerned as a country, we are not wind of um, international infrastructure. Yes, we are not independent. We are still dependent on them. So uh, what is agitating my mind is that, are we making any uh, plans or do we have a plan that this could be something that can really hurt us and therefore let's find our local alternative and uh, does he know the capital outlay in trying to have one of our own and if there are any timelines i mean this is a very 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 important um, revelation she's brought that we are still colonial in our, in our orientation so far as internet um, access and facilities are concerned. Thank you, Rano. Well, Kweku, there was also the allegation that the communication minister, Osla Oswekufu, plagiarized the entire statement. Any evidence to that? From MP for Kweku? Tamale Central, Butala Ibrahim Mohammed, who says that. He has done some research. Mm. And if you put the minister's statement to parliament just some hours ago, mm. side by side with a similar statement released in Nigeria, mm. it appears Ghana's communication ministry mm. have copied word for word the statement that was released in Nigeria. Oh. This house, uh, Mr. Speaker, this house is a house of records and facts. When the minister was delivering the statement, I pulled a similar statement from the Nigeria Commission of Communication. And it seems to be word for word. And this house, I would, I, word for word, Mr. Speaker, and that's why I'm making reference to the, the statement that I have just put through. If it is true, 
then that is how low. Plagiarism is just is, 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 is terrible. And it appears that way. And that is why I want to make this submission to this House. And I expect you, Mr. Speaker, to let them check if it is true. This must not be tolerated. That is my first statement. The second one has, yes, it appears so. And I can make that statement available. If it is so, we demand another statement. No, because that for me is disrespectful to this house. The sanctity. Away from that, importers and freight forwarders uh, are the Tema Port are demanding waivers from shipping lines for rent, storage, and demurrage caused by delays in clearing cargoes at the port due to the disruption in internet services. Now, the general disruption in internet services across the country since last week has negatively affected the clearance of cargo at Ghana's largest seaport, leading to huge demurrages, according to industry players who insist the Ghana Shippers Authority must ensure such extra costs are waived. There is more in the following report. Ghana has for some days now been experiencing a nationwide internet disruption, which according to the National Communications Authority, the NCA, is due to outages on multiple submarine fiber optic cables that connect Ghana. Now, government in 2018 introduced the paperless system to check financial leaks at the ports. Its implementation by the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority meant the port had gone paperless. With the internet challenges, facilities and freight forwarders say they are struggling to clear their cargoes. Explaining the cost impact on doing business at the port, co-chairperson of the technical committee of the Tema District of the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders, Paulina Abraqua, said they expect the Ghana Shippers Authority to intervene and ensure shipping lines with the extra cost due to delays. Since our activities have been disrupted, delays with regards to cargo release and terminal releases, the, the impact has been great. And um, things have slowed generally, and that is a lot of cost to our clients, which we are not so happy about, and which we are appealing to the Ghana Shippers Authority to really intervene, um, begin a conversation or begin a conversation with the shipping lines to at least um, wave off whatever demurrage and of course with the terminals for whatever rent or storage that will accrue because of course as we all know it's not the fault of anybody it's not the fault of any importer or exporter for the internet issues and so we we appeal to them by now we are we're hoping or we are still hoping for them to at least um, begin a conversation and come out with some releases for to know that they've got the back of the Ghanaian trader and then in terms of the cost that is really staring at us. I, I feel they are even late. They should have had the release maybe at least Friday and because the situation quite affected a lot, especially it was bad Thursday and Friday and delayed or cared cost had been um, incurred already. The Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana Samson Asaki Awingobit says the economic management team must immediately come up with a plan B to avert huge losses in the sector. The fact of the matter is that it is very severe. Uh, it really affected the port operations. The impact is going to be huge. So I would rather call for uh, a plan B if that is going to be the, because the soft people have already suffered. They could not clear their cargo since Thursday after today. Uh, if today the system is not working as it's supposed to be, I expect custom, I expect shipping lines, I expect terminal operators to have a, a manual way so that when the system is back fully, they can fit to the system. There's a need. So for that matter, maybe EMT, Economic Management Team, uh, must meet and come out with you know, give us modalities so that the port can take that plan B to work. As industry players wait for concrete intervention from the regulator, the Ghana Shippers Authority, Ghana Link Network Services Limited, the operators of the integrated customs management system, ICOMS, say they remain committed to fully restoring operational capacity expediently. For Joy News, Carlos Caloni, Tema. Now, the Ghana AIDS Commission is rejecting claims that health facilities have now been forced to ration antiretroviral drugs for persons living with HIV. 
The Association of Persons Living with HIV earlier said they feared the country would soon run out of stock. According to them, instead of at least three months' supply of antiretroviral drugs, some of their members now receive only one month's supply of the medication. The comments and reactions are coming on the back of recent revelations by the Global Fund that over 200 containers of medical consignment, including antiretroviral drugs, have been logged up at the Kotoka International Airport since June 2023. Listen to Manager of Health Product Man Management at the Global Fund and a member of the Global Fund country team for Ghana, Eric Nyili Kira, on the assessment of the situation. I would really say that uh, I, I, we don't understand clearly uh, what has been the major root cause. Uh, according to the Minister of Health, um, the, the main issues about uh, ECOWAS and African Union uh, levies, which should be paid uh, based on the decisions that were taken by the parliament in I think uh, July this year uh, but uh, it is clear from uh, our agreement with the government of Ghana that um, uh, Global Fund does not uh, pay taxes and levies so this is something which uh, has been unclear to us and we are we continue to engage uh, the Minister of Health uh, to, to see how the situation can be addressed because uh, you know, uh, the beneficiaries uh, are waiting for these um, health products, these life-saving uh, uh, products, which have been uh, in the port for several months now. So um, uh, we really hope that uh, the leadership of this country will be able to address this problem as soon as possible, because not only uh, we have issues around availability of health products, uh, which translate into stockouts, but uh, at the same time we are uh, uh, a big issue of expiry because uh, some of these products have uh, shelf life. I mean, uh, uh, two months, three months, uh, sorry, two two years, three years of shelf life, and they've already spent one year in the pot. What's the monetary value? Uh, the money that I can, it's about used to uh, around 40 million uh, US dollars. Uh, now it has reduced, I can, I don't have the figure, but it's around uh, between uh, 35 and 40 million US dollars. The national president uh, of persons living with HIV, LCIA, has raised concerns that some health facilities have already begun rationing the antiretroviral drugs for some patients living with HIV and AIDS. She spoke on the pulse. A while ago. So far as I know, for from last month, okay. our members are given one month supply of antiretrovirals when they go for their medication. Mm. Mm. When this happens, it is a sign that we are running out of stock. Okay. Especially if you are a stable client who has been receiving three months up to six months supply, and you get there, you are given one month. It is telling us that something is not, uh, all is not well. Okay. Coupled with the fact that after we attended the uh, meeting with uh, the, 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 the global fund, the country team, last week, and we got to know that we had the current stock level would go out, will run out, in May this year, then that explains why we are receiving the, um, um, one month. We are being given one month mm. because the, the hospital has to, the facilities have to manage the stock that they have. What mm. if somebody tests positive and the person has to be put on treatment immediately? You can't afford to give people six months. So, and so, 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 so what you're saying is that, sure that there's some. so the indication is that. Mm. We are low. We have low stock level. Mm, mm. So what so you're what saying is that from viral. from February, February, your stable members or your members in who are stable client are being given a month supply instead of the six months that the Ghana the Ghana uh, uh, AIDS Commission has just been telling us. Between three to six months supply. Yes, mm. you are given one month if you are a new client newly enrolled on treatment, then you are giving just one to see so that you could return and they will know how it went with you, if everything was going on well before you are even given 
a bit more. But the Ghana AIDS Commission is denying these allegations. Director General of the Commission, Dr. Etuahene Chirame, says only a few hospitals are suffering the shortage. However, they have categorically denied that they are rationing. That, that cannot be true uh, because we have enough antiretroviral medicines in the country. Uh, at least we have up to, we have medicines that will last at least for the next six months. And so that, I don't know where that information is coming from, uh, but I know that we don't have any situation that should, you know, cause any anxieties among people living with HIV in the country. Mm. So if a person with, with HIV is going for his or her antiretrovirals, what are the quantities that, that you give them? <laughs> well, it's, I like your question, but let me answer it this way. Mm. Um, the, every person is especially the stable uh, people on antiretroviral treatment should receive six months uh, amount of, I mean, amount of medicines that will last the person for six months. At least, if we cannot meet that amount, it should be not less than three months. Mm. So we are doing multi-month uh, scripting now. And so we do not expect that uh, patients who are stable will keep going to the health facilities every month for their medicines. Okay. Uh, but of course, those who have been newly initiated, they need to be mod monitored by the clinicians to ensure that there is no problem. Away from that, more revelations are emerging following Joe News' premiering of its latest online documentary, Empty Plate, the Free SHS Promise. As former Chance President Alhaji Yakubu Abubakar is blaming the delays in release of funds and payment to suppliers for the precarious acute food shortages bedeviling the free SHS policy. The documentary presents a first-hand insight into the grim nature of inadequate food in the schools and how parents are forced to adopt unorthodox ways of feeding their wards. Investigative journalist Kwete Nate interacts with some school heads who are forced to feed the student with one specific meal for the whole academic term. Here I said. To the online platform I had infiltrated, I discovered numerous complaints from school heads about weevil infested maize bags supplied despite assurances from the free SHS coordinator that only a few bags were affected. My observations revealed several bags of maize being treated with neem tree leaves to ward off the pests. Given the critical food shortages, some school heads have conveyed to me their inability to discuss the contaminated maize as there's scarcely enough to feed the students. If you look at here, I, I, I want you to take, I want you to take a view. This is maize infested. It was highly infested. So, someone advised us that we can use the name tree. So yesterday, we put it outside. The boys put it outside. And, they, and these were given to be fed to yes, the children. Yes, yes, three SHS. And so, oh, they are there a lot. So I was, I'm experimenting. So we still spread it on the, on the ground. We put the name tree upon it. And we are seeing some reduction in that sort. But is this the work of headmasters? The full documentary airs at 8.30 p.m. tonight here on the Joe News Channel. Uh, this is still the Joe News Prime. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Don't go away. Um, the break, this is still the Joe News Prime. Now, art copywriters have uh, been successful in creating catchy phrases.
that stick with people over the years. Now, can you recall the phrase anajo yede? Can you still sing, quote, I have vitamin A? Do you remember the famous tagline of Dark Bar Soap, Semenshia? In today's Ghana Month series, my colleague Danesia Poma Eje walks us down memory lane and revisits some of those nostalgic moments. It's wonderful to reminisce about the TV commercials of the past, isn't it? They were indeed a memorable part of Ghana's culture. Many of us can recall specific ads that left a lasting impression on unmemorable characters. Let's take a trip down memory lane and relive those nostalgic moments together. Let's start with a good night mosquito coil outfit. Night mosquito coils, just right for the night. Next is the legendary men only deodorant spray. <laughs> Sorry girls, some things are for men. And oh, how about Kasape's greatest gift to lovers? Yes, you guessed right, free night calls. Bye. So today you spoke for two hours. Eh, it was a wrong number. Do you also recall the commercial that had Semencia as its tagline. Mwachi de fe 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 bi ma. Sa. Is it with me jeho? Many jeho pa. That's so nice. I'm just so many ma. Glitch room. Eh, yema on sa. Me da si. Mwachi de fu fu subi de kaho. Sa. You brighten up my day. Save the best for last. Let's wrap it up with an old TV commercial from your super station, Joy FM. This is the 10.7 FM. There is a 60% chance that we will rain today with continuing thunderstorms along the southern part of the country. This is Joy FM's traffic watch. There is a heavy traffic jam on the number 5 North Cabo Road. Switch to the Kentucky Terrier Highway if you are on your way to the center of town. That there is an 80% chance that a comet will hit the surface of the earth. This is the first time in 50 years that such a huge comet will Joy News. All you need to know, reveal. For Joy News, my name is Denise Yapoma Eje. Oh, that was a proper throwback there by Denisia. Now, Joy FM Eastern Camp Adventure was a whirlwind of excitement and fun for our patrons, with many of them yearning for more. The tour, which marked a celebration of Ghana Month, was packed with endless fun, with a lot of activities like dance competition, movie night, visit to a cinema waterfalls, Konfuanoche's hometown, Aokugwa, and the Safari Valley Echo Park. Our patrons, including our oldest adventurer, are already eager for more. Maxwell Agbagba has more in this report. Scores of our patrons are circling a bonfire and singing Jama songs. Saturday night, 10 to Sunday morning, filled with dance competitions, quizzes about Ghana, plus fun challenges. Many of them won beautiful wooden fabrics as prizes. Your 
definitely here um, at our campsite um, where our patrons are going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be bonfire with jammer session, there'll be cocktail, there'll be barbecue, there'll be movie nights, there'll be dance competition, and a lot of prizes to be won by our patrons. They are pumped up for a lot of fun. Meet retired Liberian and the oldest member of the group, Mary Akofu. She's 74. She's one of the people taking part in the JAMA session. She says Joy FM's credibility as a media house is the reason she does not miss any event organized by the station. When there is news breakout, Joy will be the first. And when you hear news on Joy, it is the truth. Yeah. You wouldn't have to cross-check before. And because I'm an information officer, I always prefer making sure I pass on information which is correct. Yeah. So that is why I like uh, uh, joining yeah. Joy FM. Uh, President Ekofuado has urged the African Union to work closely with the economic community of West African state, ECOWAS, to devise strategies to dissuade countries considering withdrawal from the unified body. The call comes in response to Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger's recent decisions to exit the regional bloc. Sub-Saharan Africa has become the epicenter of terrorism, which now accounts for over half of all deaths from terrorism. The latest Global Terrorism Index shows Burkina Faso suffered the worst impact from terrorism, with deaths increasing by 68%, despite attacks decreasing by 17%. Since 2020, there has been nine coups in West Africa, Central Africa and the Sahel region, with Mali opening the floodgates when the army staged a mutiny and subsequently executed a coup, which was led by Simi Guetta. Burkina Faso joined with two military coups in 2022 and 2023, and then there was Gabon. The Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, and Sao Tome and Principe have all witnessed failed coup attempts over the same period. The surge in unconstitutional changes of government have been fueled by citizens' disenchantment with their leadership, a sentiment echoed by the executive director of the Center for Democratic Development, CDD donor, Professor Henry Prempe. 38% of respondents say, only 38% of respondents say they are satisfied with the way democracy is working in their country. So while overwhelming majorities of Africans continue to express a preference for democracy and reject all the other alternatives and and note that Africans are familiar with the alternative to democracy because the, the first 30 years of African independence from 1960 to 1990, essentially, was the period of autocratic, non-democratic rule. So it's not as though Africans are not familiar with the alternative to democracy. They are familiar with them. So when you ask them, do you like this one or do you like the other one? They overwhelmingly reject the alternatives that I have mentioned. One man rule, one party rule, military rule, which are the alternatives to democracy familiar to us on this continent. The African Union's Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, Ambassador Bankole Adioye, expressed deep concerns about the military takeovers that have occurred on the continent in the last five years. Ambassador Adioye emphasized that the AU has zero tolerance for unconstitutional change of government and assured of the Union's commitment towards addressing the re-emergence of military coups on the continent. It is also necessary, at the same time, for the African Union to declare once and again, once and for all, that the African Union has zero tolerance for undemocratic means to power. Well, this is still the journey's prime. We'll take a quick break. And we'll be back with showbiz right after. Do stay with us.